are in your bulletin. Uh, I just have one more. If you are uh, someone who wants to share anything with the congregation, we send out a newsletter probably about quarterly. And um, to, tomorrow is the last day to submit things, or, or Tuesday, Janet will be in. So if you have something you want to put in the newsletter, please submit it uh, via email or drop it off in the church office on Tuesday. Are there any other announcements? Barbara. Our restaurant rendezvous is May 19th at 5.30. We're still not sure where we're going, but if you would sign up in the back, I'd greatly appreciate it. So this way, when we figure out what restaurant we're going to, we can tell them how many. Thank you. Anything else? Yes, one. Yes, sir. I have to turn the power around. I just noticed the sound is wrong because I don't think the power ramp is on. Okay, let's take a moment. <laughs> Otherwise, all the microphone stuff we're doing. There you go. I didn't think it was on. But yep. <laughs> Everything is on. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Excellent. Let us rise for the Thanksgiving back. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose hand we are given new birth, by, um, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, merciful Father, holy and mighty, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for the oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams, Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, nurture both props and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving waters of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash, wash away our sins and, and, all and all that separates us from you. you. Empower our, our witness to your resurrection. resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's needs through the living water. Flow, uh, where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, 
who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our gathering hymn, I Know My Redeemer Lives, verses 1 to, three, one to 4 only. Thank you. 
Guide us by your voice, that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives with you and reigns with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Acts. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who believed were being saved. The word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning, Psalm 23, will read responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading this morning is from 1 Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you are right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of God. The word of life. Thanks be to by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep hear his voice. He calls his sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger. 
but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved, and you will and will be come in and go out in fine, and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they might have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Good morning, folks. So nice to see a few visitors and guests here. I love it. It's wonderful. It's also wonderful that we hold together our community faith by joining each other every Sunday morning, and I appreciate your presence. I want to start with a little song. There are not too many children here. You're not really a child, my dear. <laughs> so I will incorporate the, the children's sermon into the sermon. I the Jesus little lamb, ever glad at heart I am, for my shepherd gently guides me, knows my needs and well provides me, loves me evermore the same, even calls me by my name. Do you remember singing that in Sunday school? Some of you might. Well, I never really went to Sunday school as a child, but I was a Sunday school teacher because I learned a lot between the ages of 12 and 15, 16. But I never really understood this song. When I sang it, I was even, even as a Sunday school teacher, I, I was never little in my life. And I certainly didn't bleat like a sheep. Listen to the first part of our gospel today, and let's make some sense out of today's gospel, because I really want to focus not so much on the sheep, but on the gate, the gate or the pathway or the archway that leads us. Listen from the gospel. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They know his voice. They know his voice. Remember that. Let me tell you a story about a young lady who was the oldest of five children, who was abandoned by her father. She became actually uh, the, head, the adult head of the household at age 12 cooking and cleaning and trying to keep up with school and everything else that was going on. It was then that she realized through these messages the Good Shepherd could be her father. Through caring others such as yourselves in church, the community and school. Because he was all loving and accepting of this awkward struggling young lady. The gate for her was a welcoming faith community. That community showed her the love of Christ, helped her understand the crazy mixed up life she was living, and it also provided her with a role model for living and for life. Key pieces of our existence. When we focus on the gate, the gate that is so important to this young lady, and to many who seem very lost, we read from Isaiah, the God we serve is a God who opens gates for us, and when he opens the gates, man cannot shut it. Gates and paths have captured human imagination for millennia. The gate, sometimes an arch, a door frame, or a transition into one way to the other, is often seen as a portal into another dimensional world. The path is used as a symbol for life's journey. In Solomon's temple, the East Gate, originally thought to have been built around 3000 BCE, is known as the Golden Gate, the beautiful gate, 
the gate of mercy, because it was associated with the portal through which the Messiah would come. In later times, the East Gate, seen as a place of miracles or spiritual enlightenment for its pilgrims, was visited often. Gates and paths are considered liminal spaces or sacred spaces by indigenous people where one may receive special power to do good or evil. A monk, mystic author Thomas Merton writes, the gate of heaven is everywhere, everywhere. Jesus uses passing through the gate as a metaphor for entering the kingdom of God. May we all find places and moments where the veil is lifted and we experience deep meaning, goodness within, goodness in life, and the reality of hope. Now, uh, we may try to open gates with our own strength and fall flat on our faces, because we're, we're not so strong. We're, we're really weak many times. Sometimes we may succeed in opening a gate with our own strength, only to find out that somebody else has closed it. When we face such situations, we should allow the Lord to open the right gates for us. His mighty strength and power will open gates so that no one can shut them again. No one. Sometimes the Lord may lead us in a different path. At such times, we should not try to escape it. We need to persevere through them with the power of God's love as our strength. When Jesus faced the cross, he did not run away from it. Peter tried to put up a resistance and cut off the right ear of the high priest's servant. And Jesus told Peter, just stop it. Jesus was willing to drink the cup which his father had given him. He did not call the cross a burden, not as a cup given from the devil or his enemies. He called it a cup which his father had given him. He was willing to follow the path on which his father was leading him. Even in our own lives, we should not try to escape from the path of suffering when the Lord leads us through it. We should not close a gate that the Lord has opened for us. When I was in Ireland, I was told by some friends there that there were spin, thin, thin spaces, they call them, thin spaces in that beautiful land, like the Rock of Cashel where the veil between earth life, earthly life and eternal life was really very close. Where you, if open, where you, if open, could internalize this deep spirituality of coming together with the true God in a spiritual way. What are some of your thin spaces and thin moments when you've come close to understanding your God? and your relationship to him. <coughs> Are the paths of heaven and Eden's east gate right before us in nature, in relationships, in our hearts? Even in this congregation of our among fellow worshipers, do thin spaces and thin moments find us in experiencing love, reconciliation, merciful justice, silence, and even laughter. So when I walk with God, knowing he will open gates for me, I trust he will show me the way on this earth and will lead me home. I pray I have the faith that a tender sheep has in following the master. This is what I pray for you, to hold the trust of this in your heart. And remember that we are here in this community of faith to be his lambs, not bleeding lambs so we can open the gates up for others and welcome them in. Amen. 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 Let us sing, rise and sing, Savior like a shepherd. Lead us, green books, number 481.
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is conceived at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in joy, the joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You are the shepherd who gathers us in your mighty and loving arms. Help your church to listen for your voice, especially when the voices of sin, idolatry, and oppression threaten to overpower us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The green pastures, still waters, and dark valleys of this earth all belong to you, O Lord. Sustain your creation with a love that is both mighty and just. Where there is destruction, bring healing. Where is, there is desolation, bring abundance. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. You proclaim the shepherding love, comfort, and protection for all people and all creation. Direct our, our leaders in our time to learn from your example and instruction. Give them servant hearts that they generously seek the good of all. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. You journey with us whatever your paths may lead. We pray for those feeling overwhelmed by anxiety and depression or suffering in any way. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. You are the sheep gate that gives safety to your beloved flocks. Provide protection for refugees, victims of domestic violence, those who are imprisoned, and all people who are vulnerable to violence and mistreatment. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who we name in our hearts or aloud who need our protection and support. Pastor Michael. Pray for Pastor Michael. Michael. Pray for Mary. And Shirley. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. You can call your sheep by name and lead them through the valley of death. You give, we give you thanks for those who have died and now dwell in your house forever. Be with those who mourn and give them hope in the promise of resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Joining in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers to you and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace of
pray. Gracious God, we give thanks for these gifts of the earth. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord of all, who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen. We sing with one voice to ten, verses one to four only. At the Lamb's I feast we sing.